Hey guys, welcome back to Star Wars. We were talking about The Last oh, Jedi and yeah. my horrific opinions of The Last Jedi. How you much you love it. And how much I love it. You fucking bee. Um, so where were we up to? Uh, you were just talking about how much you love Canto Bite. Yeah. But you did say that it lacked fleshing out though. That was it does. It really doesn't feel like a real place. But uh, I do like the sort of the fantasy of it. Well, oh. so, just to catch people up, uh, I am reading an essay that uh, Mabini wrote on these films. So whenever I talk about it, I'm not. Um, I'm, I'm just quoting Mabini. Yeah. I'm reading it out. Loud yeah, I feel seconds. like the post game in Gen Two did feel a little uh, lacking in the meat department. You know. Gen Two, bro, you can literally yeah. go all the way to Kanto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What That's why it's a Kanto bite. Yeah. You get a little bit of Kanto. Uh, I get you it. Know? <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of good. <laughs> Alright, you can stop talking now. Could have done more to suggest why that planet in particular was special. Yeah. While the Snoke throne room scene with Kylo and Rey was cool, it was very sudden. And so when Kylo asked Rey to join her, of course she was going to say no. They yeah. both clearly had very different ideas of the Force and Sith and Jedi. What was that last bit? The both clearly had very different ideas of the Force and Sith and Jedi. Yeah, so um, Rey is like, the Jedi are like the best thing ever and everyone should agree with me. And oh. Kylo's like, yeah, no, the Jedi aren't all they cracked up to be, you know. The Sith is kind of where it's at. Where it's at. And so sort of, I found that interesting that they're coming from those different directions but then he, he, he'd had this change of heart and said well the Sith aren't really where it's at either which I think he was on the right path with that if he's on the same sort of path as Luke Skywalker I'm in a champ train you know. uh, Ray is just super force sensitive I guess yeah okay full stop oh, she, she's just like the chosen most powerful she is super ever. talented but all she has is that she was abandoned as a child yep really likes character development in The Last Jedi yeah, she uh, doesn't learn anything. Kylo's is way better. You've put a lot of full stops in here, man. <laughs> you might as well like my brief thoughts. I a lot of big sentences. He turned against the Sith, but maybe in a very Sith way by killing his master. I mean, yeah, that's that. That is that's how the Sith do it. I don't even know. I can't remember. You know, I shouldn't even. I should. I'm not. I want to point out. I'm not really interjecting at all my thoughts on Last Jedi because I can't remember. So, mm. this is really. This is just the Mabini show for today. Yeah. It's like Kylo had way more thought. Put into him from the beginning while Ray had next to nothing. Mm. She's a scavenger, she was abandoned, she wasn't really doing anything before she got swept up and everything. Poe and Holdo was really good. What? Uh, Admiral Holdo. Who's the that? The girl with the pink hair. The oh, one, right. Yeah, the one who did the... She, she was kind of a bitch the whole movie. Right. And, but she sort of had the right idea. She was doing a really bad job of explaining where she was coming from and I think she could have and as, and as, and this isn't as like a character study but just as like a, as a person oh, yeah. she could have been better but she wasn't and so she sort of redeemed all of that by what she did at the end by being like no I'll take the ship it's alright yeah and I thought that that was really great and the, the relationship between Poe and Holdo is that like she thinks that he's a great pilot, but he's reckless, and he clearly is. He's just like this jump in a spaceship cowboy go blow stuff up. Yeah. Those two characters made that, made all of that um, command spaceship rebel thing nice. Made it a really, really cool experience. You then go on to say, having Poe's authority being reduced uh, because of his mistake and basically fighting against his allies when it turns out he didn't need to. Yeah, so like they're escaping the First Order, but also they're fighting amongst themselves. Mm. With Poe being like... Would you say that like that's a bit contrived though? That like they have to have this infighting, which could be easily resolved if there was a slightly better communication? Or would you say it's still engaging regardless? Sorry, what was that? Because I think I remember some people were annoyed that like, you know, why are they even having this internal fight? Because that's what happens. Yeah. That's what happens in real life. Yeah. Like where, as things develop, <coughs> there come people argue over who should be in what position for these things. Yeah. And so. Well, that's no, what I, Poe I agree. Was doing. I'm just he saying. Was, I remember Poe. people complaining about this. Yeah, maybe people don't understand. Maybe people are just stupid. 
Uh, maybe and no one understands films like I do. The scene with Leia and Kylo when the Rebel command ship gets blown up was great. I don't remember that. Mm. Kylo couldn't do it, but it happened anyway. Leia flying through space was disappointing, but I'm over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a funny sentence. What was the thing about, um, was it say Rey and Kylo at the Rebel command ship? No, it was Leia. Oh, Leia. Yeah, so that scene, uh, Kylo's with a bunch <laughs> of fighters to go and blow it up. And he's, like, having this moment where he's like, do I really want to go and blow up my mother? And then yep. the other guys are like, yep, we're blowing it up. And then he's like, it, it's another one of those sort of uh, pegs in his story that say maybe he didn't need to be in that position in the first maybe place. Maybe he didn't need to be such a dick. And it, one of those things that add to his character is just this, like, this path that he's going down that... Like, he's kind of, like, the best character in the entire sequel trilogy. <laughs> I would agree, I think. Yeah. You go on to talk about this, the Leia floating through space stuff. Yeah. Uh, Leia fl- flying through space was disappointing, but I'm over it. Full stop. It's fine. Full stop. Her f- force sensitivity is cool. Full stop. Yeah, I don't know. I remember just being so jarring when I was in the cinema and just being like, I don't like this at all. It seems so cheesy and corny and, like, I don't know. It felt very weird. Mm. misplaced and wrong and strange and gross I didn't mind it so much at the time when you're expecting it I imagine it's probably like less yeah uh, at the time it was like what the hell have they done yeah you know what I'm talking about Frank the famous Leia floats through space scene uh I know like a little bit of it but I obviously don't have like the surrounding context to go with it yeah. You know what I thought was really. But I do remember really she's cool just floating in space, and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, she can just become a force ghost now. This is she like. She's a force ghost. She just used the force to pull herself back into the ship. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I don't think she becomes a that force must, ghost that at must, all. Actually. That must be a different no. moment in the movie. Because I remember the other common complaint that I hear about the end is like, all of a sudden everybody's becoming force ghosts. When it's supposed to be like, a I think more force rare sensitive thing, I think. is what you're talking about. Because a lot of people get really mad at Broom Boy at the end. Force Ghost is a very different thing to being force sensitive. <laughs> In fact, she Leia doesn't even even die until the second, uh, third film. Um, What's that? Leia doesn't die until yeah. So her death's too recent for her to become a force ghost if she's even uh, that. Um, is that how it works? Is it a time it, thing? No, you actually have to try and do it. In the canon is that Qui-Gon supposedly becomes a force ghost or becomes able to communicate with people. Then Yoda can... Uh, and he teaches Yoda how to do it. And then Yoda teaches Obi-Wan how to do it. And then uh, Luke learns how to do it by himself, I guess. Unless Obi-Wan teaches him. I don't but, think Luke... But, it just happened to Luke. You didn't try at all. He was just, he was dying on Hoff, and then, oh, hey, hey, Obi-Wan. <laughs> yeah, well, no, uh, uh, Obi-Wan was taught how to do it by Qui-Gon, that's the idea. I guess so. Oh, I uh, see here. Uh, the complaint, now that I have a little context here from looking it up, the common complaint that I had seen, obviously, with no context, was people questioning how Rey could see, uh, how, how so many Jedi show up as Force Ghosts for Rey, when only a very select few, Yoda, Kenobi, etc., knew um, about the ability to retain the oh, within the cosmic You're force. talking about in The Rise of Skywalker at the end. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I forgot okay. about that. Yeah, so yeah. I don't, you probably don't know what well, they do. They added this thing where, like, she, what is it, um, come find me or something like that? Uh, I don't know, she but... She says it, like, twice in the movie. At, at first, she it was it like, be with me. Yeah, in The Rise of Skywalker, she does a, a Goku, everyone lend me your energy kind of thing. And she gets all the voices and stuff of Force Ghosts from the past, and they all join her and give her power to defeat <laughs> Palpatine. Mm-hmm. It's so... Okay, anyway, we're talking about The Last <laughs> Jedi. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, the Master Codebreaker stuff was great. Yeah, I thought he was a cool character. I think he was well acted. That's right, I remember him. Yeah. The guy they wanted only noticed them when they got captured and the guy they got was shady as hell yeah he nothing personal it's just business stuff was cool at the time but now it's a bit lame <laughs> yeah, yeah i guess yeah. 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 i think maybe there's business. just a bit too much of that it sounds like something from the godfather or, or Scar- yeah or and it was also done in um monsters vs aliens as well yeah nothing i think it's personal. a, I think it's a, it's a bit of a business. trope yeah a bit of a line bit a uh, bit of it done 
guaranteed it, it probably originated from like Godfather or something. The weapons dealers sell to both sides, and while our man has a heart, he's just in it for himself. That's not really a note, that's just sort of a thing that happens. It's a bit like Han Solo. Kind of like Han Solo with yeah. the originals. Yeah. <laughs> the part of Canto Bite that really let it down was every time Rose said pretty much anything. Oh yeah. no! Yeah. <laughs> Are you a Rose hater? I, do, I actually, that I that like her, and, I yeah. like her line after she crashes into Finn and says, hey, why, why are we going to be, why are we going to be fighting? Why can't we just be loving? That's, yeah, she's like, um, that's, we don't defeat the First Order by killing, we defeat them by loving them. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> uh, but I okay. thought that was a cool line. <laughs> Well, but every what, other line you think that's ruins really the scene. Yeah, yeah, it's always like political and angry. Okay. Um, I did. Oh, you um, say a lot like Ray, really. The the way that when uh, when she and, and Finn meet the first time, she's like crying because her sister died. Yeah. And um, Finn's trying to escape, and she's like she's trying to do her job by stopping people from escaping. Mm. And so, then Finn's like, oh. And then he tries to escape and he gets gets captured by it. And then after that, not so good. Until right. the end. Uh, you then say Holdo and Leia were the only good female characters, really. Oh, and Maz Kanata. Was she in the second one? Yes, she was. Huh. She had a brief scene where she's on the phone with Poe because uh, they couldn't do the story by themselves, so they needed someone else. Um... And so they rang Mars Kanata and she's like, go find the Master Code Breaker. Bye bye. Right. I don't remember that at all. But again, I think I've only seen this film once. Dialogue, a bit bad, but the fact that she was fighting people dur uh, during the call was great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's just like fight, shooting a laser gun at people. It's like a union dispute. Uh, keeping Poe on the command ship was great for character development. Finn didn't get any didn't get any at all. I'm guessing character development? Yeah. Or Poulos. Which one are you talking about? Character development. Oh, Alright, yeah, sure. <laughs> Poe was great. Yeah, okay. Okay, so you don't like Finn's character arc? No. He doesn't really get one. He does get an arc character arc. The problem is kind he of like... He becomes like, like, he becomes like a general of the rebellion. Um, but... He goes from being a coward and wanting to run away to... Um, Leader of the resistance. Yeah, something like that. Except they don't really elaborate on that. It's just like, oh, really? Okay, thanks. Well, I think it's like, you know, Rose is trying to teach him that like people need him and people rely on him and he shouldn't run away from his responsibilities and stuff or something like that. Yeah. Well, no, but he becomes uh, a proper leader in Rise of Skywalker. Luke? Because he, um, after Leia um, after Leia has a heart attack, whatever the hell was supposed to happen, <laughs> um, Poe <laughs> and Finn become leaders of the Rebellion. Yeah. Luke tricking Kylo in the First Order to buy the Rebels' time was half and half. The trick was great, the buying time part was a bit cliché. But what else are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what I said. Okay. <laughs> what else are you going to do? I don't know. I still think it's a bit too ridiculous for me, personally. Mm -hmm. but, um, I thought it was cool, though. The problem is with things being really cool is that you kind of have to make them a so, little bit out, of, out there. For context, Frank, what happens is is that Luke Force Ghost projects himself in front of the First Order while they're attacking the Rebel base. And like all these AT-ATs and stuff, they start firing on him, but they can't defeat him because he's not actually there or whatever. Right. You know, Liam, it's okay if movies add things to a franchise. Well, you, that's not what I was complaining <laughs> about. That? I just thought it was a bit silly. That he project himself. Yeah. Uh, no, just the the whole setting of like all these massive AT ATs and stuff facing down one guy. Because then, it like, was the, off his it was kind of the like, joke of the movie was that he was like, "What am I going to go out there and face down the, the face down the whole first order?" Yeah, I get and it. I just and, didn't yeah. find it funny. I don't know. Uh, I found it amusing. Like when I was watching the film, it just kind of took me out of it. Like, eh, this is kind of silly. Yeah. I didn't think it was terrible. Again, you keep putting words in my mouth. I said this last recording session, and probably one before that as well, where you think I'm a dedicated Last Jedi hater, but I keep saying over and over again, I think the film is fine. Next time yeah, we know you on hate. this show, we will talk about whatever Frank's saying. Yeah. <laughs>